Hello, and welcome back to I Used to Hate the Color of Yellow. I'm Amber. I'm Jessica. Okay. What are we talking about today, Jess? <laughs> um, messy roommates. <laughs> Terrible, awful roommates that just made our lives miserable. So we're going to do a little fun one. Like, yeah, just like all the crazy made our lives, but also maybe we made their lives miserable. I will vouch for that. I'm sure I did that. No, I will not vouch for that. What they did, they did to me, and they were t one in particular, but. <laughs> okay, um, roommates. So, husbands. Man, they're the worst roommates ever. Just wait. I'm just kidding. I'm just teasing. <laughs> um, I can wait. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, good, bad roommates. Okay, let me think. Dorms. So, if I go back to roommates. Dorms, Penny and I were good. We got along great. Um, yeah, we did that. I lived with people during the summer. I will, this is funny, I'll, so I'm just going to go, I'm just, we're just going to share stories um, today, folks, so just reminisce. Mine, um, these girls actually were both bridesmaids in my wedding, so we got over it. <laughs> <laughs> but it was the summer after my freshman year in college. We, I lived down at Bloomington during the summers, like at Aisha. I never went back home because my parents moved to a different house. I didn't really have a bedroom. So, um, I just lived down there and worked and took summer classes and it was Kristen and my friend Aaron that lives out in California and myself. And we lived in this apartment right there on Mulberry, right next to Constitution Trail. Um, and it was the end of summer. Everything was fine. We had to like clean up our apartment and Aaron and I were way, well, actually it should remind me of, we are cleaner than Kristen. Sorry, Kristen. Um, and maybe that's not the case anymore, but this was like our 19 year old selves. Yeah. Um, I do remember, so I don't remember getting petty fights, which is about being petty friends and stuff like that. Um, I remember yelling at Erin, she'll still like bring this up for us well. Um, she put, how, how gross is this? She would toast, make toast every day for breakfast and got her toast crumbs in our big tub of butter. <gasps> and then I remember going to get it, put it in like, I don't know, like in my green beans or something. And I'm like, who put the toast crumbs oh in the God. butter? It's so gross. <laughs> like, this is gosh. And I just like went off on her. I don't know. It was dumb. <laughs> See, right? But like, it was gross. That's funny. <laughs> I'm like, don't do that. Oh, yeah. Jeez, Kristen. <laughs> no, that was me that did that oh, to Erin. Oh, you. That was me <laughs> that did that to Erin. I was okay. yelling at her. Well, no, she, Erin did the toast for us, but I yelled at okay, her. Okay. It really wasn't a big deal. Jeez, like, Kristen. Aaron. I know, right? But, um, no, Kristen, what we did is we were trying to clean up the apartment before we moved out so we could get our, like, do you guys still do that in apartments? You get your deposit back if you're leaving yeah. a place clean. Yeah, that's how ours was. So Aaron and I decided we made a schedule like, okay, we got to clean up the apartment these days. And Kristen was like, I'm not listening to you guys. Like, no, uh -uh, I'm not like, I have things to do. So she came home like, oh, I'm going on a date and like left. And Aaron and I were like so mad because we had already done our share of cleaning. We're like, no, you need to clean up today. Yeah. Oh, so while she was gone, we packed all of our stuff up. And maybe Kristen can tell a better story of it. But this is what I remember. We packed up all of our stuff, including the TV and everything, and left. She got back from work, gone. <laughs> That's amazing. I wish you could see Jessica's that. face like that. So petty, so <laughs> dumb. I love that. We were so, and then I didn't even have a place to live yet because I, I was going to do something like that. That's amazing. I <laughs> and I didn't have a place to live, like because the dorms hadn't opened up yet. I think we still had like another week left, maybe like half a week or something. So I'm like, I don't care. So my my guy friend, my best guy friend from high school, Jeff, like let me crash on his couch for like a week. I had everything packed up in my car, and I just crashed on his couch until the, I was able to move into the dorms. Because we were so petty and moved out on Kristen. Mm -hmm. And then we didn't talk again until like November. Oh my god. That was August, November. That's hilarious. Stupidness. <laughs> so that was a dumb one that I did. That was roommates. Um, I lived with, the next summer I lived with my friend Aaron, her boyfriend, another guy. And I don't remember much. I wish I like, we had pictures like you guys do, like Snapchat memories or Facebook memories that would probably come up. But I don't remember until I go back to my journals because I journaled all the time in college. But I just remember it being really gross and dirty. Like they, the guys never did their dishes. And I just remember like dish. I don't remember ever going into the kitchen. I don't know if I ate that summer, what I ate. Because I don't remember going to the kitchen of that apartment. I remember where it was at. It's on Broadway at ISU. And um, the kitchen counter, like the sink was filled with dishes. And it overflowed onto the counter. And it overflowed all the way down to the ground. Because Aaron and I just refused to do the dishes. Again, I wish the viewers could see your face oh right now. Oh my gosh. Just wait till you hear my roommate story. I would have killed you both. Like, that wasn't me that did it. 
Oh, I thought you said you and Aaron. Like, no, we didn't, didn't do our like. Oh, I mean, sorry, we did not do their dishes. Oh, we refused to do dishes. I thought you said you didn't do dishes. No, we did not do their dishes. We would not have gotten along. No, and that's where I think I kept like, literally like uh, uh my own silverware and fork like in my yeah. uh, like a cup and two plates or whatever it was like in my own room because I refused to do their dishes and pots and pans. So that's why I'm like, I don't know if I cooked. Like I don't ever remember cooking there. Mm. I think I was just too busy working at a different place. I probably ate out fast food all the time. Who knows? Yeah. But that was one I was, I remember that was kind of gross and just stupid. And, um, yeah, that's, I would hate that. Yeah. Yeah. Go, what, what you got? You want to do, I mean, I could go with other little funny no, stories. you can keep going. Keep going for a while. Because yours is a doozy. doozy. Yeah. <laughs> um, so then, so again, summer. Well, no, actually, so this is after Aaron. Aaron and I live together a lot. So my friend Aaron, um, it's McGow now. She lives out in California. Love you, Aaron. Um, but we were, we've been friends since fifth grade, and we worked together at Dairy Queen, and it's funny because people would always be like, are you two sisters? And we're like, no. And um, I've even had a friend, like, from here in town, be like, I saw a picture, I was like, are, I didn't know you had a sister, I'm like, I don't, and it was Aaron. But so we lived together a lot, like, during the summers, we lived together, and during, oh, gosh, I was looking at that. And then um, my first year living up in the Burbs, her and I moved in together with, like, her boyfriend at the time. Um, Aaron came home, she was a teacher. It's funny because she was a teacher and then I eventually made it with you. But I came home to this little note like, hey, um, I don't forget exactly what it said, but like, uh, decided to get, decided to get her, her name's Maddie. Hope you love her as much as I do. And she got a yellow lab puppy. Oh no. And, um, in an apartment. Yeah. Um, where we all were working like eight to nine hours a day. Jeez. And that dog, first of all, I don't like, sorry, mm, do I even say it? <laughs> I can say because I'm not going to have haters. Um, yellow labs are very active dogs. Yeah. Very active. Labs are just active. Um, and Maddie was a sweet dog, but that dog was like grew and big. Yeah. And we, we just couldn't give it the attention. I mean, we were 22 at the time and working like crazy. Like, no. Aaron had to hire like a local guy, like an older man who was retired in like our apartment. And this is Schaumburg. Like, we're small town people. Actually, we lived in Palatine, but this is like in the burbs, and she trusted some old man to come into our apartment, gave him a key to our apartment. He came in, grabbed the dog, and walked the dog, like every day, like twice a day. And um, the dog grew, and he ate the drywall, holding the drywall, and he ate the legs of the end table. Or she did, sorry, she. And she, at one point, our vacuum cleaner quit working, and she, there was dog, like, hair everywhere. Like, you could literally take your feet and scrape the cat on the carpet. It was so gross. And I'm like, what are you doing? And I forget where, when she eventually, after that year, she moved out to California, and that's where she's still at now. Um, and got a teaching job out there. But I forget what she ended up doing with Maddie. But yeah, don't ever get a dog without consulting your roommates. I love you, Aaron. But um, <laughs> yeah, that was when I'm like, what are you doing? Um, see a bunch of little ones, snippets. Um, gosh, there was one I was just thinking of that. Oh, one summer. Summer before, see, the one summer in college that I did with Aaron, I moved out of Florida just mm -hmm. randomly on a whim. I think I talked about it before. Um, but another, this is a guy friend, Aaron. We were, Aaron LeBlue. We were in fifth fifth grade friends. Um, and he was one in the Air Force. He's like, oh, we just got, like, I got an off, what is the base? Off base uh, townhouse. You want to come down? So we did. But then for some reason, like, our jobs, I, another one of my friends from college, she came down to live with us too that summer. But for some reason, our job didn't let her off for her 21st birthday. We're like, no, we quit. So same thing. We just up and I like, decided to leave and move back to Illinois because like summer was almost over with anyway or whatever. And um, I don't know if she ever even paid him the rent. Like I think she like like didn't pay her share of the rent. And I don't think I found that out until months later. And Aaron was so mad at me. He's like, you brought her down here and she just left us high and dry. I'm like, I'm so sorry. I had no idea. Uh, <laughs> so I've been both the bad roommate and the roommate that was like, Weekend when people did like dumb choices to me. <laughs> yeah, like, what are you doing? Um, I lived with my grandma when I moved back down. Um, moved in with Penny again when I was living with my, like, the summers when I wasn't subs substituting and worked tables again down in Bloomington and stuff. And she let me live in her basement. I don't know. Yeah, it's just overall nothing horrible. You got to do me. What yeah. you got? I'll start with mild and then work okay. my way up to the worst. <laughs> um, so in college, well, first of all, I, so in college, I 
the second year I had a job waitressing. Mm -hmm. So my job was to clean up dirty dishes and right. clean up after dirty people and well not dirty people, people who make like, you know, food, eat food. Right. So I was constantly like running dishes back, putting them in the big dishwasher yep. and wiping down tables. Like that was my responsibility for hours. So when I would come home and see that the dishwasher was empty and all of this stuff in the sink, I she was my best friend at the time. I was not destiny. I was like, bro, why? The dishwasher is literally empty. Like, oh, I just didn't get around to it today. Like, you got off of work at five, and I got off of work at eleven, and you didn't get around to it. Like for six so, hours. What are you busy doing? Yeah, nothing. So that happened quite a bit, and I like could not stand that. And then I had a roommate. Um, she ended up moving out and we got a, actually Destiny, which was like the best thing ever. But, <laughs> um, she was living in there and I had these like really nice sweaters that you weren't supposed to dry because mm -hmm. you're supposed to start like the knitted ones, you know, where it undoes it. Right. Um, rather than being a normal person and come and like knock on my door and be like, Hey, your laundry is done. Can you switch it out? She just does it. Like, uh, I understand, like, the intention behind it, but I was literally in the other room, and she washed, or she dried all those sweaters, and they just started falling apart, and I was so mad. Like, I just refused to talk to her. I was 18, 19 at the time, mm -hmm. so I was, like, very petty, and I would just, I acted like she didn't even exist. <laughs> that's how, that's why my mom said, like, you think people are disposable. Yeah. That was in a previous time. One. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, so I was so livid. Um, then things got better. Yeah. Oh, no. How did I even forget? Before I moved in there, I was living in this townhouse with two other girls. A woman who was in her, like, mid-30s. Okay. And then another, another lady, she was, like, I think 20, I think she was my age at the time, like 24. Okay. And then I was 19. Um, How'd you find these people? College. Like, okay. Well, right. and then the one girl, uh, I really want to say her name. But That's okay. Uh, she's the one who was 35. Yes, she, totally. Yes, she like had the place and was like renting it out. Gotcha. Okay. And like we knew her from church. Okay. So I lived there and I got really sick. I have a stories of getting really sick. Yeah. Um, but I ended up, long story short, I had a tumor on my pancreas, but I didn't know. Mm -hmm. And eventually it's dissolved down to a cyst. Okay. Well, I'm like, I don't even know if it's there anymore, but, um, anyway, so I was back home for three months, but I was still paying rent and, um, rather than being a normal person and keeping my mail, she threw all my mail away. What? That was the year after I graduated. My, she threw away my diploma. <gasps> she threw away like my brother's letters. She threw away like if I got any like check or anything, she just threw it all away. What? And I, when I got back, I was like, you threw away all my mail. And you were paying rent too? Yeah. Like, I get it if she wanted to be petty and like, as you, if you weren't paying rent, like. No. What? And she was like, um, she was like, I just, you didn't say anything. And I was like, why would I have to say something? That's my mail. That's common sense. So it was like a whole big thing because um, I, I don't think I overreacted because my brother's in prison. Mm -hmm. There's like stuff you have to be careful with. Like, yeah. like there's just stuff that can happen. And if he's telling me something personal, like, and that gets out there, like she said, not only did she throw them away, but she ripped them in half. And I made the statement, what if I had checks or something in it? And she's like, I didn't see any checks. Oh. Yeah. So it was a whole big thing. Like I sat her down. My other roommate was such a baby. I'm sorry, but <laughs> like, I was like, can you just sit with, like, she was year, like four years older, older than me. And I was like, can you just sit? And she's like, I'm not going to say anything, but I'll just sit there. And I was like, oh my gosh. So like, no, you don't have to say anything, but like, she just sat there quietly. Like she wasn't there and like made like, I'm just here because I'm just listening. I was like, all right, cool. So we had the conversation and then this woman literally like went on this whole escapade about how like, I thought we were really close. And I was like, I'm 18 or 19 and you're like 
late 30s we don't like you make no effort to hang out right like we're on completely different journeys like it's different like between you and I because we keep up with that communication right and like we hang out and we talk but this woman like I just live with her so anyways yeah she threw away all my mail um so then it was the next one with the sweater thing and then living with my old best friend we moved out into an apartment together that was a disaster she was very codependent on me. Okay. And it's like, I didn't have personal space. I should just walk in my room when I was sleeping. Oh. Like, I even, I tried putting things up against my door because there was no lock. She's still coming. And I was like, and I need you. I'm like, come on. Like, you can't do this. So that was pretty bad. But there was a minor one of me being a live-in nanny. That was just a stupid situation. Yeah. Not the not the good job. Yeah. The one when I very first got to Colorado. Oh. It, it was just stupid. Oh. Like petty. Like she wanted me to work more. I physically couldn't or I like financially couldn't do it for right like, for little money. Like yeah. you needed to pay finances. Yeah. Yeah. So anyways, that was that. But the one before my my best roommate ever, Casey, the one before. She was in her sixties. She still is. Can we call this? Let's give her a name. Don't give her a real name. Um, uh, you make a name because I'll make it sound uh, too close. Uh, 60s, let's go with Kathy. Kathy. Okay. Kathy. I'm like, I don't know her name. Like, I hope it's not a Kathy. Okay, so Kathy. No. For whatever reason. So I live with two, uh, the one, the owner, she late 50s or mid 50s, and then Kathy was 63. Okay. And so I thought getting into this situation, like you just ran out of room, like it's going to be so easy. Like, I, the, can I interrupt? Sorry, yeah, sorry, sorry. No, no, you're I, good. I need to not interrupt you as much. No, um, people still rent rooms in today's world. Like, I feel like when I read stories to my literature classes, like, and we read them like, oh yeah, well there's boarding rooms. Like that's what they used to do in the old days. Like, I feel like that's sketchy to just to rent a room. You've done that multiple times, like rented rooms and spaces. Oh yeah. Oh, that was another thing. Um, I mean, it is sketchy. Like, I had to know, but you know the people. Yeah. No. No. The one girl that I met, she was from Columbia. I didn't say that one. She was from Columbia. Oh, yeah. Not in this episode. Yeah, but earlier. And talking. like more in depth. Um, I had been living with her for like eight months, and then I saw the sign outside, and I thought it was like a vote for me because the guy had like his thumbs up, and I didn't like look it up because I was like, whatever. And it's in like, Spanish. It's in Spanish. Yes. Yes. So. Are you in Texas at this point? Oh, Yeah, yeah. so this Texas. was in 2019. Okay. I was in Texas. This was like October of 2019. Um, I was like, uh, came, there'd be times I'd come home, like at, I don't know, those were my wild days, so I'd come home at like 5 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why, but her and this guy, you would think that there would be something going on, but every time I walked in, mm -hmm. it was pitch black in the living room, and they were sitting on opposite corners, and I'd come in, and she'd be like, hello, Jessica. And I was like, what is going on? I thought I was tripping because of like, the amount of drugs I did. <laughs> so after, like, a couple times, I, like, I still to this day have no, it was the weirdest crap. Still to this day, I don't know. Like, and then we wake up the next day and I see her, she act like weird crap just didn't happen. Like she would be in the living room with this person there, opposite sides. Pitch black. And I don't and just know. sit in the dark. I'd walk, Sitting in the dark? Yes, pitch black. I'd walk in and when I'd say like, I'd always from then on be like, hello. Cause, and then I'd have my flashlight on and like, it was like weird, like weird. I don't even know what was going on, like weird. Um, so anyways, randomly, she was like, one day, hey, I sold my home, and in two weeks, like, I'm moving to Columbia. I was like, what? Like, you can't just do that. And she was like, well, I have the sign now. And I was like, I can't read that. And so, yeah, luckily, I had a friend. I moved in with her and her family. Um, yeah, that was, that was good times. Um, but yeah, so that happened with that one. Now, Kathy. Now, okay, Kathy. so Kathy. Gotcha. Yes. So Kathy is 63 and you lived with, so sorry, I digress because of the room. So somebody owned, one of these two ladies owned the house. So the owner will call her K. 
Candace. Okay. <laughs> Candace is the owner of the home. Okay. And she had two extra rooms that okay. she rented out to like help pay for her mortgage. And okay. Like cheaper for us. Like and do you still use like the the communal space, like the living room and the kitchen stuff? Like yeah, but I never did. Okay. Yeah. So just hung out here. Or well, at Colorado, I was working like three jobs. Oh right. So, so you're like, not really there. You just left. I. That's the what makes this even more aggravating. I was literally just there to sleep. That's it. I kept to myself. So for whatever reason, like I try with Kathy at first and I'm like, hey, like we connect, whatever we talk. And like, she asked me about my life. I tell her she then proceeds to think that it's okay. Like, mind you, this is Colorado. So this isn't like small town. Great. Like, again, it's not the biggest I've ever been, but this is not like everyone knows everyone. She then tells to a guy that I've never met before in my life next door neighbor, who I am, how old I am, all three places that I work, um, like times that I got home, like, oh yeah, she's just coming in from this, to this man. And that bothered the crap out of me. So I confront the situation. I'm like, hey, that's not cool. You told this guy, how I found out is because she told me, she's like, oh yeah, I was telling, still don't know his name. Mm -hmm. I was telling whoever about like what you do and I was like why would you do that mm -hmm. like that is all my information that I entrusted you with what if this guy oh I've known this guy you know how many people I've known like right. that doesn't mean anything like I cannot take your word for that um so it started off like that was what made me uneasy and then one time I was just chilling in my room like I had my door locked I was laying on my bed luckily but I had my airpod in and I was like watching like a show or something all of a sudden my door like jiggles and I'm like what the heck and it opens and Kathy is like <gasps> and I was like what are you doing and she's like I just I can you go to the store and get me toilet paper like literally and I was like no <laughs> no I will not and so I get up and I shut my door and I when I get angry I have to lock myself in and give me, cause I will go off. I've gotten a lot better at it. Yeah. But, um, so I calmed down, I went outside and I called my, my mom. No, I <laughs> called my mom. <laughs> I called Charlotte or whatever we called her. Oh, the one lady, Candace. Candace. Yeah. Oh, good save. <laughs> She's a great person anyway, so I wouldn't even mind. Like I love that woman dearly. Yeah. She was great. It's just the other way. Um, so I called her and I was like, Hey, explain the situation she's like oh my gosh like I'm coming right away and she was trying to like find out like why Kathy had a key in the first place and apparently her story was she was trying to see if the key that she had for her room would work for mine and then she proceeded to say I didn't think she was home so I was just checking mm -hmm. I don't have I still don't have anything that you can steal from me but it's principle like right so I like not lost it but like got upset and I was like hey like I'm paying for privacy right and then so the owner made her pay for a new like lock like a new door right job. so then not only like there was two keys I know this is stupid but there's two keys to open the front door and then there was a key now that I had to lock and unlock for my bedroom right and it was like stupid and the fact that, like, this is an adult, like, a grown, grown, grown adult. Like, yes, 63. very grown. Like, I guess age doesn't always mean that, like, people are, no, what about the hard expect them to behave. Yeah. So, she did that, and then, so at this point, I'm getting, like, very frustrated. I'm like, all right, I can't do this anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, And so here's, here's where it just all... Just all whatever. Um, so I have, I deal with trauma from past things. Um, like in Houston, like you always had to be watching your back. Like you couldn't just walk the streets, mm -hmm. especially the part that we were in. You couldn't just walk, like you always, someone was either carrying, like I had stuff on me, like even just knives, hand in my pocket, always ready. Um, so like I have had people like run up behind you or like they're following you or they're like driving and following you and um, like 
my old roommates, my friends, they could tell you stories about like we walked in a gas station seeing some crazy things, like all of this stuff. You so, have to be aware and alert and smart, common sense and street smarts. Yes. Like, and, and that's something that you've been able to gather over your time, yeah. not just in a small town. So, yeah. So this happened twice, by the way, what I'm about to tell you. It was like I had just gotten off um, at, I think I was with the girl's home. Maybe I was sleeping and then going to wake up and head there. Um, for my overnight shift. Yep. Um, but it was, I don't know what I was doing. Maybe it was after delivering groceries. It was midnight and I hear this loud like bang. And I thought that it was um, Candace's grandkids. Okay. Because they were always over, which was no big deal. Like, right. Um, so I just thought it was them and like went back to sleep. And, but then I heard it again this like knock and I was like what is going on so I opened my door and it was nothing and I was like all right I'm hearing things so I fell back asleep come to find out the next day she had that same guy oh jump Kathy's guy yeah, that she told Kathy, him all your stuff yes had that guy jump the fence so it was like it was like here's the side of the house and it was a fence that did like this oh yeah yeah, yeah. and then it, it got goes, bigger yep it stair steps up okay so you okay. have to like go over, jump this part to get to it, to knock on my window because my window was like enclosed. Um, she told me she had him jump and was knocking on my window at midnight. And I lost, I was like, why would you do that? Why? Yeah. And so I brought it up. I said, hey, this happened. Situation was taken care of. Because apparently someone locked the door. She locked her phone. She didn't have her keys. Like all these excuses. And she thought, you know what? I should have this guy jump and knock on Jessica's window. Why? Um, why? She was gone. She was out at midnight. Okay. Here's my, what I've gathered. Okay. This is not like solid, but from being around it and knowing, like I can definitely tell this woman definitely would go over to her next door neighbors and smoke pot with them. Oh, okay. Like this guy who was in his like mid thirties, just chilling with Oh, the 65-year-old woman. Oh, Kathy. Yeah. It was weird, but I was like, all right, whatever. He was a weirdo. Yeah. Like, I didn't know him, but this man. So they were probably over there, like, hanging out, smoking pot. And then yeah. And she got locked up. Okay. Yeah. So then she tries to come in, and um, and this is not some, like, sweet, old. This is a crazy, like, I'm sorry, but crazy, like. Creepy 30-something-year-old. Oh no, her oh. Um, Kathy. Oh, like she is just she's not a sweet old. Like she is crazy, and like she would do. There's a bunch of other petty stuff, but she's just wild. Just take my word for it. Yeah, okay. Um, but then okay, so the second time, um, and then I will be wrapped up with it. But no, you're fine because the second time that's just scary. Yeah, I, um, I didn't think anything of it because this happened like a couple months later, mm -hmm. and I was like didn't even wasn't even registering in my head this was in daylight but it was like my windows were um you know that like film you can put over it where it's like a design yeah oh yeah yeah so, so yeah, it's so like you can't see through it yeah yes. so it's like this design Clear on the paper. inside but mm -hmm. then like um it was blurry right, right. On the outside so um the, all of a sudden i see this like black shadow um, he was like wearing a black hoodie mm -hmm. um, and he was like I see the shadow and I like freak out I bolt out of my bed to my closet and like survival skill I'm like all right what am I gonna do here and I hear the knock on my window and I was like I had something that was like because again living how I've lived I like booby trap set up by windows <laughs> and I was just panicking and all of a sudden I heard like yelling and it was Kathy like Jessica hello and I was like you've got to be freaking kidding me right now so I go into the front door and I was like I lost it I was like you did not just do this again I know you did not and my heart's pounding because I right. really thought and she was just like um she's like well you wouldn't answer the door so I had another conversation with the homeowner we all sat down together she the homeowner unfortunately is very passive aggressive so she couldn't sternly be like this is wrong right she was like we all had to talk like have a sit down talk like gentle parenting mm -hmm. sorry if you agree with that but some of it's just 
my opinion. I've never been a parent. I've never been a parent. <laughs> but like, it was a gentle like, let's talk about how we feel. Like, no, you did. You did yeah. this. Like, own up. Right. It wasn't like that. And so, um, finally one day, like it was talked about, discussed, and about how this just needs to stop. We need unity. Like, I am at the time. I'm 22 years old. Right. Like, or 23, something like that. I was like, I no, no. This is I'm this age, and you're 60 something, and this is ridiculous. So, I end up like Casey ended up asking me if I want to like move in with her, and I was like, yeah. Um. So I left. Like. Mm, I left the homeowner a message and because it just didn't work about like us talking like right. so our schedules didn't align so I tell her all this stuff and then she was like I just wish I would have known and I'm like are you we had a whole sit down talk and you babied her yeah like so yeah that was my experience like definitely like traumatic and I thought somebody was literally following me again right. and this man knew my whole schedule so like I don't think it's that crazy to assume that he, that something's like yeah. yeah. And well, it's just you have your edge, you know, or like your walls up. You want to be safe. Like I feel like we as females are like that, you know. And if you've been in an area and you've experienced stuff where you do have to be a little bit more cautious, uh, then you are aware of that, and you don't like no. I don't want. I tell people my business because I want them to know if something bad goes on. I don't want them knowing just because they know. Like that's not how this works. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -mm. So, is that lady, when you left, was Kathy still living with Candace? Yeah, apparently. I don't know why she won't kick her out. I think she need to figure out, find out who the third roommate is in that situation right now. And yeah, like, so, what are your crazy her. stories? Like, ha is Kathy still, like, having, like, the next door neighbor come knocking on your window? Well, so the, girl, the girl that previously lived there, she mm -hmm. was also an intern. Oh. Um, I ended up finding out, like, she stayed the full year of the internship, and then she had left. But, um... She had asked me, I had met her, and she was like, well, how do you like it? And, like, I was like, mm, it's livable. And she was like, oh, yeah, we should get lunch sometime. <laughs> we had never ended up doing that because I was never, like, I don't know. I was really busy last year. Right. Like, yeah, you were. Um, so I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. Some of those stories. Oh, my gosh. Crazy roommates. Um, sometimes we're the crazy ones. Sometimes they're the crazy ones. Like, it's. I don't know, share some of your stories, like, yeah. good, bad, and ugly, or if you're one of my roommates, sorry, if I did something weird, I know I'm sure I did something stupid, who knows. I but, was very moody, I will, like, take that, like, very mm -hmm. up and down in my emotions, and get very angry, like, I'm sure that was really annoying to deal with, but as far as everything else, it's dumb, all, dumb. to all my roommates, be better. <laughs> <laughs> oh shoot. Okay, um, let's end with a question. Um, do you have one? Um, hmm, we're talking about roommates. Where's who? Like, where's your favorite place that you've lived, or like favorite group of people? Oh, oh, that's a good one. Um, I'm gonna go with. I, I I wish I could go back. I'm going to go back to senior year in college, the six of us girls living together. Um, I think just because it was our senior year and I didn't appreciate, I mean, at that point you're starting to like really appreciate like college, like how much freedom you have. You're never going to be able to nap like that in the middle of the day again when you have a real job. And, and um, just the, like the carefree life that we had, um, it was before cell phones. So you're really communicating and it was just good times. Like it was just fun. So uh, that I think was I mean we had our, our bad moments and our tough moments for sure that year but overall that's where I would go you honestly even though I ragged on it the girl from Columbia yeah that was a messy part of my life so of course that's why I'm like ah oh, yeah that was the best yeah worst part of my life but I had so much fun yeah like, not all like not even because like oh I did all of this stuff, but I had so much fun of like, like I had no responsibilities. Like yeah. I just had my car payment and then cheap rent, and like I blew through all my money. But I had so much fun. Um, but I was like constantly. I my best friend at the time, like my Houston bestie Michael. Mm -hmm. Um, like I would be staying at his place a lot. Nothing weird. He likes boys. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> but like. <laughs> 
<clears throat> he was literally like a best bestie. Friend. Yeah. yeah. So like we'd hang out or I'd stay the night there a lot. He'd come over and stay the night at my place. And it was just fun because we were just Careful. kids, yeah. kids just doing. It's funny that we picked the same stage of our life. The, you yeah. know, the time when we were like carefree, somewhat responsible, but not. Yeah. And just could be reckless in a good way. You were reckless probably. So a little bit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, just fun. Just no, I would for sure different. go on benders <laughs> and then sleep for like 20 hours. Oh, yeah. No, I know. Yeah, that happened. Yeah. And it, like it blew my mind every time I did it, even though it was a regular thing. I was like. It's the it's nighttime of the next day. That's crazy. Oh my gosh. Yeah, no, never did any of that. Um, so yeah, so those are our uglies, uh, roommates, and our ugly things, and just sometimes you know, life it gets you where you're at. And now you know what do you do? So you learn from that, and you share your funny stories and wisdom with other people. So yeah. thanks for listening or watching. Yeah, everyone, be safe and have a great day.